sisters and brothers, if you have come to a tomb to pay respect to the teacher, the angels say to you this day, April Fools, he has risen indeed. Happy Easter to you all. Amen. My name is Jonathan Brown, and I am the assistant pastor here, and I'd like to share a few announcements with you and extend a warm welcome to all of you gathered here this glorious day. In your bulletin, you will find the Connect cards. We want to ask everyone to fill those out. Put your name and information. There's also some great opportunities that are on those cards. Let us know if you are interested in those. Please place those cards into the offering plate as it goes by later in the service. Uh, we also have a special gift that we want to share with all the children gathered here today. So at the end of the service, we'd like to ask if all the children present can please come into the parlor to receive a nice little surprise. Easter is not just a day it is a season and a way of life. And here at Atlanta First, we have some great and exciting opportunities coming up in the upcoming weeks and days ahead. First off, I wanted to let y'all know about our upcoming sermon series, Spring Training. That will begin next week. It will be talking about, the, we will be working through the book of Acts and talking about what we need to get ready for the upcoming Pentecost and living in a post-resurrection world. We also have two small groups coming up that I'd like to take, tell you all about, some opportunities to grow. Starting next Sunday, April the 8th at 9.45 a.m., Ben Adams will lead a study on the Gospel of John uh, using the book John, the Gospel of Light and Life by Adam Hamilton. This is a look at the Gospel of John that looks at the gospel as the most deeply spiritual of the four gospels, with the aim that readers will not only believe in Jesus Christ, but they may have life in his name. The book is available to purchase uh, from the church for $15, or you may order it from Amazon.com in printed or digital format for around $12 to $10. Please, if you are interested in this program, email grow at atlantafirstumc.org or make sure to note your interest on your Connect card. There is also another small group study starting April 9th. This one will be at 7 p.m. and will be an online study group. The study will be entitled Good News to the Poor, Christians, Christian Thinkers on Social Justice, this will be led by myself and Deontes Wimbley, and we will look at how different Christian thinkers and workers have approached the church's mission to love the world. We will look at the works of John Wesley, Howard Thurman, Dana L. Roberts, Walter Rauschenbach, and others. We will discuss where the church has been and what we can do to be a part of God's mission here and now and the materials will be provided. We ask that also that you email grow at atlantafirstumc.org or once again, note your interest on the Connect cards. The bulletin is full of several opportunities to grow, engage, worship, and serve. I encourage you to look at all of those and see where you want to plug in in the life of the in the life of the church here at Atlanta First. Hear and respond to the call of worship that is printed in your bulletin. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. And we are all alive in Christ. Glory to God. Alleluia. Now, will you please stand as you are able as we sing our hymn of praise, hymn 302, the first five verses of Christ the Lord is risen today.
Hear the good news. Rejoice, heavenly choirs of angels. Rejoice, all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ, our King is risen. Sound the trumpet of salvation. Death has been swallowed in victory. The grave has lost its sting. Darkness vanishes forever. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. God, we come to celebrate this day, the day that you conquered death and gave life abundantly to this world. We ask that you come into this space and in this time and you take our hearts and make them yours that you work in us and transform us so that all may come to know your love in this place. Be with us now. Allow your will to be done. In your name we pray, amen. Now will you please stand as you are able as we affirm our faith in one voice with an Easter affirmation of faith that is found in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father of glory, who by great power resurrected Jesus from the dead, giving us hope in the high calling of a heavenly inheritance, and in who is revealed in the immeasurable greatness of Jesus Christ allowing us to know God's own self through the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in Jesus Christ, who suffered and died for our sins, who rose from the dead, rose up into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, whose name above every name, whose authority is above all authority, whose power and dominion are above all power and dominion who reigns now and throughout the age. I believe in the Holy Spirit, who gives us wisdom and the ability to love one another, who enables us to believe and empowers us to be the church, the body of Christ, dwelling and filling us with power and with the fullness of him who fills all.
may be seated. I am Jasmine Smothers. I am the lead pastor here at Atlanta First United Methodist Church, and it is my joy and honor to add to Pastor Jonathan's welcome to you today. We know that there are so many places that you could have chosen to worship, and we are honored that you have chosen to worship here at 360 Peachtree Street. At Atlanta First, we exist to worship God, to serve others, to grow together, and to engage the city of Atlanta. That is why we are here. That is why the doors of 360 Peachtree Street have been opening for 171 years this year. And while they will continue to open for all the years to come. So we do want to encourage you to fill out your Connect card so that we know that you are here. If you are visiting from out of town, know that Atlanta First Church is here for you and with you and, if you, and will be your family while you are in town. If you need anything, please let us know. If you are in town and around Atlanta, find a way to get involved here. Even if you are not a member, this is a great place for you to serve your city and to serve your God. And you might use those Connect cards to do that. Once you fill them out, please drop them in the offering plate that will come after the prayer. We have so many, all of you are special guests this morning, and we are so grateful that you are here. We do want to recognize that Mrs. Betty Small is with us today. We, Betty is a long, long, long time member of our congregation and has been ill, and we are so thrilled that she is here with us today. So please um, say hello to Miss Betty as the service finishes today. Our children in worship are so important to us, and they're important that we, we worship with our children um, on these feast Sundays and celebration Sundays and Easter. So there is not children's church today, but there are many opportunities for your children to be involved in worship. Please make sure that you have a children's bulletin and that you are not bothered by the sound of your children, because I am not. One of the best sounds in worship are the sounds of children. So please do not be distracted or think that you need to take your children out at any point. Also be reminded that Miss Susan Johnson has special gifts for our kids. And Bryce, um, one of our, the twins, will lead um, all of our kids um, to pick up their gift right after worship today. Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. Isn't it a beautiful one? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice mildly and be glad in it. It is prayer time. And prayer time is a special time in the life of our church. We know that God answers prayers. Marley Franklin is sitting right there. She has been battling cancer for several years now and has not been able to worship with us. And this is a special, special day and a special gift to have you back in worship with us as well. Please fill out your prayer cards. Bring them to the altar rail with you as you feel led. You were invited to come and pray this morning. As you come, please notice the Easter flowers that have been given by the Rice family and their descendants for over 100 years and are given today in memory of Georgia Rice Wooten and Mary Rice by Lillian Deacon's Timberlake. We also want to remember Dr. Timothy Cunningham, who has been missing for a couple of months. We want to remember the family and friends of Kathy Hicks, who passed away last Thursday. We had her funeral this past week. We want to remember Pastor Robert's family and all of those who are celebrating Easter in new ways this season. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord, here we are to worship. Here we are to bow down. Here we are to lift high that old rugged cross. Here we are to proclaim the love of Christ until everyone in this world experiences the abundance of life that you have promised. 
Oh God, early in the morning, Mary Magdalene came to a tomb and she was looking for something dead. She was looking for a dead body. She was looking for the end of the world. She was looking for the story to be over, oh God. But what she found was life and life in abundance. And for this we give you praise. Thank you for this triumphant sign, oh God. Thank you that through a tree and through deceit and through despair and through mystery and through hope that you continue to make us Easter people and to deliver us over and over and over again. We thank you for being our master healer, O oh God. We thank you for Marley, we thank you for Bill, we thank you for Lucille, we thank you for the heads, we thank you for Les, we thank you for Betty Small today, we thank you for Tim Cunningham and his family, we thank you for the Chandler family and the Deacons family, we thank you that you continue to be our hope where all we see is darkness, to be our strength when all we feel is pain to be God all by yourself and to not need our help. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for our active duty military and our first responders. We thank you for the leaders of this nation and this world. Make us to be a people who follow you, oh God. Not who follow ourselves or follow our own whims or follow what we want, but follow you, oh God. Thank you for the gift of the resurrection. Because it reminds us that there is always more to the story. So we praise you. 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 We praise you, we praise you, and we shout hallelujah. Oh God, thank you for the many gifts that you give us. And as we turn to offering time, oh God, help us to be cheerful and generous givers, being reminded that everything we have is a gift from you. So help us to pour it back out to you so that we might continue to be the hands and feet in this city and beyond. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen.
source of my strength. Yes, you are the strength of our lives. And we will lift our hands in total praise. In total praise. In total praise. In total praise to God. Haven't you come to praise God this morning? Haven't you come to shout hallelujah and to thank God that today we celebrate a resurrected Christ? That we've come through a week of deceit and despair. We've come through a week of pain and hurt. We've come through a week where we've had to be reminded that our Savior was murdered. And yet we made it. We made it. We made it through. We made it to celebration. Hallelujah. Turn now to the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter. Beginning in the first verse, I'm reading from the New International Version. Feel free to pull out your phone or your iPad or follow along in the bulletin so that you can take some notes this morning and be with us. Please stand while we read the gospel this morning. Early. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, you know, the one whom Jesus loved. And she said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in. And he saw the strips of linen lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself and separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. But they still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary... Mary stood outside the tomb crying. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? And thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. But then Jesus said to her, Mary? She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Roboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said, Do not hold on to me. 
for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to see my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. So Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. She said, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way in us and through us and among us. Blow a fresh wind and a fresh fire through this place so that everything that is said and everything that is heard comes straight from you, O oh God. Hide this, your servant, behind that old rugged cross and transform us this Easter day so that we won't be the same once we hear a word from you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Have you ever wanted to escape? No, no, think about it, <laughs> seriously. Have you ever wanted to escape? Have you ever wanted to run away? Have you ever said, you know what? Life is just a little bit too much for me right now. I just need a minute. Maybe it's work. Maybe you dread every Monday morning. Maybe it's school and you dread every Tuesday morning. Maybe it's your home or your spouse or your children. Maybe, just maybe, there's something you need a break from right now. Maybe it was that cancer. Maybe Alzheimer's. Maybe financial ruin. Maybe you're tired of sleeping and under a bridge. Maybe it's mental health. Maybe it's fear. Maybe you just don't know how to put one foot in front of another because you're just so overwhelmed with all of the stuff of life. Have you ever wanted to escape before? If I'm honest, this happens to me, and it happened to me earlier this year. Many of you know that I got very sick at the end of January and early February, and I laid on my back and stared at the ceiling for three straight weeks and almost lost my mind. And then several of my family members were ill. And then a friend of mine got her heart broken. And another friend lost her job. And another friend, and another friend, and another family member, and another family member. And then Pastor Robert just up and died and didn't ask me if it was okay. I felt abandoned. I felt betrayed. And I wondered, God, my God, my God, all I've tried to do in this life is be faithful. So where are you? Let me out of this nightmare. Help me. Help me escape. And yet today, we encounter a very different kind of escape. Today, it's not the kind of escape that we think about when we want to run away from home and want to run away from life and want to be released from the nightmarish things that we've been going through. Today, we encounter a very different kind of escape. Today we encounter an escape that gives us life and sets us free. Today we celebrate that the tomb was empty, that Jesus has escaped from death to life, and because of it we live. 
why we're still walking around looking for a way out, Pastor Jonathan. We're still walking around waiting for somebody to release us, waiting for somebody to find the back door to let us out of. We're still walking around as if we are people without hope. Like we've forgotten who we are and whose we are, Barry. Like we've forgotten that we are the child of the king that came down off of a cross, buried in a tomb, laid there for three days, and then very early one Sunday morning. One of my favorite phrases in this text is, while it was still dark. Think about it. While you were still in pain, while you were still feeling like you couldn't see the forest for the trees, while you were still in grief, while you were still wondering where God is, while it was still dark. You see, God often provides our escape suddenly. And while we're still wondering if God is still God. But sometimes in the midnight hours, sometimes when it's dark, sometimes when you cannot sleep, if you'll just lean in a little bit and just listen a little bit, you might feel that the tombstone has been rolled away and you can start to see the light because joy always comes. Surprisingly, very early, while it was still dark, when everybody else was still, when everybody else was grieving, when everybody else had given up, when everybody else was ready to quit, when everybody else was denying that they even knew Jesus in the first place, while everybody else was running scared, while everybody else was disastrous, while everybody else had lost their hope, while everybody else had forgotten that Jesus had already prepared them for this, while everybody else was hiding, Mary Magdalene, I imagine that she couldn't sleep. And so she just found her way to the only place she thought she might be near her Savior. She wandered into a cemetery on a hill where a crucifixion had been taking place over and over and over again and just the days before and people were still celebrating and hung over from the Passover and they were not out and she was by herself and women weren't supposed to do that then. She came to the place where she thought she left him she went to get her escape. And instead it was disaster. You see, the text says that they have taken my Lord away. But the Greek translation here is better. They have stolen my Lord. That's why it's so important in the text that we understand that the linens that Jesus was bound in were neatly put together and stacked symmetrically and put there so that we would know that no tomb robber had been there, that there had not been anything stolen from us, but instead we had received a gift. That's what the Easter story is about. That's why we can't stop now. That's why we can't escape now. Because we've been given the very best gift on this planet. We have not had anything stolen from us, but we have had life gifted to us. This is a restoration story. 
It's been a hard week for the people. They've watched their government and their religious leaders take their hope down. They've watched the people that sang and cried and cried, Hosanna, 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 glory to God in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, save us. They've watched those same people start to scream, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. And they've watched those same people throw stuff at him. They've watched them pierce him in his side. They've watched him bleed to death. They've watch their world in and yet nothing has been stolen from us there's been no robbery here but the greatest escape gives us the best gift of all the disciples lord help us that was funny y'all the disciples they just couldn't get it together, could they? <laughs> they start running because Mary is starting to lose her mind. And really, they just followed her to get her to stop running through the streets screaming because people would start to think that she had lost it and that she needed to be in a mental institution when all she was doing was spreading the good news of Jesus Christ to the world. But they followed her to make sure that nobody locked her up they followed her to make sure that nobody caught her. They followed her to make sure that she might be telling the truth. They followed her so that they could see what she was screaming about. The one who loved Jesus the most and whom Jesus loved got there and couldn't go in. You ever been in a situation like that? You get to a place where you know you need to be and you just can't take it. He, he couldn't take it. He just stood back and he let Simon Peter go in. And See, Simon was a little bit slow, Ben. Simon, he couldn't run through those, those desert streets the way that the disciple whom Jesus loved could run through those streets. But Simon, he was pretty bold. Don't you remember this Simon? This Simon is the one when Jesus said, somebody at this table is going to betray me. Simon Peter said, yo, get him to tell us who it is. <laughs> Simon peered in. He said, hmm, something strange about this. But you know what? I don't want to stick around to figure it out. And the disciples who were supposed to know the rest of the story, they got lost. And they went home. Have you ever been standing on the brink of a blessing and get scared? Have you ever been standing on the side of a cliff knowing that you know that you know that you know that you know that this is not the rest of the story, but you're afraid of heights, so you have to back up a little bit and you have to back out a little bit and you forget who your God is and you forget what God has promised you and you go back to being scared again. He went home instead of staying a while. Sometimes you just need to resist getting lost. Sometimes you just need to stand in your fear. Sometimes you just stand at the empty tomb and wait for it. Lean in. Listen out. You might just hear the voice of Jesus, call your name. It's interesting to me that Mary, who had been with Jesus through so many things, she didn't recognize him. Sometimes we don't recognize when God is standing right in front of us trying to give us a gift. And... And 
And, and some scholars say that she didn't recognize him because God didn't want her to recognize him. And other scholars say she was so deep in grief that she wouldn't have been able to tell Jesus if Jesus had a sign on his forehead saying, King of the Jews. But when he called her name, when he said, Mary, she knew that the story wasn't over. But her response is, is so strange to me because of all the things she could have called Jesus, all the names she could have called him, all the ways she could have replied. All she said was, teacher. So I wonder... What Jesus is trying to teach us today. Maybe it's stick in there a little while longer. Maybe Jesus is trying to show us that if we'll just stand at the foot of fear a little while longer, if we will just stare the empty tomb in the face a little while longer, if we'll just wait for the rest of the story a little while longer, if we'll just wait for the greatest escape that has ever happened a little while longer, if we will just wait for it, if we'll resist our our own stuff, if we'll get out of our own way, if we will trust the God who created us, and maybe, just maybe, we'll declare, I have seen the Lord. You know, when I get in a place where I wonder why God has abandoned me, <laughs> I'm reminded of the Old Testament story of Joshua wrestling with God <laughs> and wrestling and wrestling and wrestling and putting his hip out of the socket, but Joshua refusing to let go. He says, I will not let go until... You bless me. Friends, that's what Easter is about. <laughs> it's about hanging in there. <laughs> it's about waiting for the rest of the story. It's about knowing that you know that you know who God is and who you are in God. It's about knowing that you don't control the rest of the story. It's about knowing that today is not Good Friday anymore. It's about knowing that you know that you know that even while it's still dark, the light is is peering in. It's about knowing that Easter is not just another day. It's about knowing that Easter releases you from death to life. It's about walking in it and acting like it and having your life changed because you are Easter people. So what? You got up this morning. Now what happens? If the Easter story doesn't transform you, it's probably time to die. If the Easter story doesn't change you, if it doesn't move you, if it doesn't compel you into a new way of life and of living, it is time for you to give it up and to die. Because Easter is about life. It's about life where you see death. It's about light where you see darkness. It's about the greatest escape of all. Miss Betty, when Trey died, I wanted to die. 
I, I thought that maybe God stole something from us, Dr. Bob, because God had told me about all the plans for Atlanta First and all the things that we were going to do together, and I was done. I gave up. I asked my mama, what am I going to do now? I can't do this by myself. That's my brother, my partner in crime. I want out. Mary Magdalene went to the tomb very early in the morning while it was still dark. And she stood there weeping. Weeping. What do I do now? My whole life is wrapped up into this Jesus. And now he's gone. What next? What now? She took her broken heart to that tomb. And I don't know what she expected to find. But she found peace, and she found joy, and she found life. Nothing has been stolen from you. So how, how, how are you going to live? Friends, the doors of the church are open. We extend this invitation to Christian discipleship. If you've been walking around in despair, I don't know any other time that's best to say, all right, it's not mine anymore. I give it to you, Jesus. The one who left the tomb empty, who raised from death to life so that you and I might not have to look for an escape ramp anymore. This is the time. This is the season to really say yes to God and to life. Won't you come? Won't you come? Won't you come? Won't you come? Friends, now we get to celebrate the greatest gift we've ever been given. 
and that is the gift of Jesus Christ as we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. I want to invite, um, this is a special moment, I think, for us. Pastor Jonathan's mom is here, Reverend Joy Ricard Brown, and my mom is here, the Reverend Dr. Jackie Rose Tucker. They are both um, ordained clergy in the United Methodist Church, and I'd like them to come up and um, be a part of celebrating the communion with us this morning, if that's okay with you. <laughs> this is a United Methodist table. It's an open table. That means that we um, don't control this table, right, Pastor Jonathan? Amen. This is God's table. And anyone who seeks to live in peace with each other, and to be in communion with God is welcome today. Why don't you go ahead and get us started with the invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who re earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, God we, we confess that we have, have not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We, we have failed to be an obedient church. church. We, we have, have not done your will. will. We, we have, have broken your law. We, we have rebelled against your love. love. We, we have, have not loved our, our neighbors. neighbors. We, we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the, In the name, name of Jesus Christ, Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us, Let us give, give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steady. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable undefiled and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people. Declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. Friends, on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he was hanging out with his 12 favorite misfits, and they were, they were celebrating the Passover meal. 
And those misfits disciples, Jesus had tried to prepare them for this night, but they still just couldn't get it. And yet, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, O oh God. He broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He even passed the cup to betray in Judas. He gave it to his disciples and he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day he raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of the Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite our servers to come forward. And as they come, I want to invite you to come forward in a spirit of receiving. When you come, come with your hand in the sign of a cross because this is a gift that you receive. You cannot earn this meal. You cannot take this meal. You can only receive it. We will celebrate communion with intention. This means that you will be given a piece of bread and that then you will dip that bread into the cup. You'll receive the gift, and you will be released to it. Go in peace. Please follow the directions of the ushers. And remember, this meal, this gift is open to all. Won't you come?
that gives me strength from day to day it will never never Doubt and calms my fears. That gives me strength, power from day to day. It will never lose, never lose its power. Oh. Chance to the highest mountain. Oh, it's flown out to the lowest valley. Oh, yeah. The blood that gives me strength right now from day to day, it will never lose, never lose its power. If you know it, just sing it with me right there. Oh, it reaches to the highest mountain. Oh, it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, Ooh, it will never lose, it will
anybody been served who wishes to receive? Yes, Lord. How about a first if you would be with me for just a moment for a moment of personal privilege. I am Wayne Pierce. I am the lead leader at Atlanta First. This week we learned that Pastor Jasmine has been invited to be inducted into the Board of Preachers. <laughs> uh. The Board of Preachers at Morehouse College. who are extended this honor represent global recognition of passion for others, for ministry to others, for a life given to Christ, and for that we are so grateful that we have her here at Atlanta First. She, she will be inducted next Thursday the 5th from 11 until noon if anyone wishes to attend. Thank you for that opportunity. <laughs> Y'all know I hate being the center of attention. <laughs> Friends, the tomb is empty. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. I know of no better news. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you for celebrating your Easter with us, and please stand as we receive this benediction in the form of the Hallelujah Chorus.